from a 40s not so unreal engine five who will win who will survive let's wait and see what we do so go ahead and hit that like for me cinema 40 versus unreal engine five in the ultimate showdown no uh yeah so we're gonna go ahead and compete Cinema 4D versus Unreal Engine 5 in making the exact same scene from the start of the launch of the application, the brand new scene to the actual finished final render. And we're gonna do a still render and then we're also going to do an animation because as you know, spoilers, uh, if you wanna go ahead, like I know 99% of you are just gonna skip ahead and see who wins. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you right off the rip. So spoilers, if you don't wanna do that, go ahead and skip 30 seconds ahead. Okay, Unreal Engine 5 blows C40 out of the water render time. It renders out 150 amazing looking frames in three minutes and 40 seconds. Whereas C40 renders out one decent looking frame at seven and a half minutes, mainly because of volumetrics and GI and stuff like that. Does the lighting look slightly better? It's kind of, uh, but is it worth it? The cool thing is, is the C40 loads and builds the scene way, way, way faster. I've already got the scene up and going and almost ready to render before Unreal Engine 5 has even got the two assets imported into it. Okay, so that's the big thing. So let's see how this happens and talk about what this means. C40 versus Unreal Engine 5. So we're gonna use Cinema 4D and Redshift. We're gonna use 2024 and Unreal Engine 5 5.4, both because they use Cargo Kit Bash at those levels they haven't updated yet. But the reason we're doing that is because to compare these two very different, but also very similar tools together in a workflow speed, we need to control as many variables as possible. So when it comes to this, the cool thing with Kit Bash Cargo is that I can bring in a the model into Cinema 4D and not have to touch anything and have it work. Same thing with Unreal Engine. Okay, so that's what's cool. So we're gonna talk about doing that, also fixing some issues within both the programs, how easy it is to do that, and then lighting it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the timer when we launch the application, because they're very different. Unreal Engine takes way longer to load than C4D, especially the first time. And then there's workflow, how to actually work it. I've made this scene in both programs um, just because I wanted to eliminate as much user error as possible. It's a very, very simple scene. So we've got the repair mech ship, which is what they're in, and then the mech, and that's really it. Then we're just we're just lighting light and volumetrics in there, and that's all we're doing. And we're gonna do that in C4D, and we're gonna do that in Redshift, and we're gonna see how long it takes to boot, how long it takes to workflow, and how long it takes to render. And then at the end, we'll see which one was really faster and the quality difference and stuff like that, um, because obviously one is free and one is not free. So we're gonna go ahead and see what happens. Place your bets. So let's go ahead and start with Unreal Engine. So the weird thing with Unreal Engine 5, we're gonna go ahead and launch Unreal Engine 5.4.4. Boom, we're clicking it, start the timer. Now we wait. And it's weird, there's no like audio ping or any kind of notification that you're actually launching it. Um, it's weird. Uh, and basically the way I want to describe, I would describe Unreal Engine here. Um, let me talk about this before I, let me, pop, let me just, so it takes a while to load up, right? A new scene. And um, basically the way it works is in C4D, you open up 2024 20, C4D and then you have like tabs and it's just new scenes. You say new scene and it's just, everything's good to go. You just start over. Um, with Unreal Engine, basically each project is more like opening up C4D and then inside of those projects, you have levels and that's with like a new scene because it's not like um, C4D where I was just like, if you want to start something fresh really quickly and new, you don't make a new Unreal Engine project because that's going to be slow. You make a new level inside that project. So it was hard for me to get used to that uh, starting out. I was like, oh my God, this takes forever to load. And I have to restart it about 50 billion times because they've enabled 50 billion things. So yeah, there's, there's gives and takes to each. All right. So we're going to just talk about this and upload that, but that's kind of something to keep in the back of your head um, that it is very different. Okay, for the sake of the video, we're going to speed this up. I don't know why, but my webcam went away during the C4D version of this, but everything's legit, I promise. From this choice, I need to know the way. I'm Will's rapid light for cinema's grand display. Render past diverge, where should my heart 
stay in the timeless war of light What price do I pay? What price do I pay? What price do I pay? Here we go, ready? So it's going to get this final little slice done, then it's going to denoise it, because I told it to do all of the bucket rendering first, and then denoise, because it's faster. 7 minutes and 23 seconds. Stop the clock. For one frame. What the hell did that take so long? But we still get, like, it's denoised out. <sighs> it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Okay, so at this point in the video, Cinema 4D has reached one frame. Uh, it took a long time, and, and I didn't even animate to do like the camera move like I'm doing in Unreal Engine. So I decide to go back. I talk about it for a little bit, then I go back, add that in, and I render that out overnight. So we're just going to speed through the rest of C4 of the Unreal Engine to get to its render time. Uh, I rendered out the C40 scene overnight. I only did 121 frames because I accidentally didn't change my frame rate instead of 150, and, and that took eight hours and something versus this in Unreal Engine 5. All right, so Unreal Engine got to the render point at 32 minutes. Now, it then rendered the first frame within about four seconds. It rendered 150 frames in three minutes and 40 seconds. Um, so it rendered out the entire animation and could do it again before Cinema 4D even had one frame done. And uh, we're going to look at them side by side and see which one you think looks better. And so, you know, there's definitely some user error uh, and so a little wiggle room. So take it with a grain of salt for the speed. It could be possibly scrunched down. Um, especially if you, you know, had a project template, you didn't need to build one from scratch. It could be possible to build this out, this kind of scene, out just as fast in Unreal Engine and render it out even faster. So food for thought. Maybe it's what you wanted to hear, or maybe it's not. Either way, it's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Who will win? Who will survive? Let's wait and see while we do so. Go ahead and hit that like for me. So to summarize, basically, you know, this isn't a one this is it. This is, a, this is not an absolute, okay? This is a grain of salt. This is like if you want to use kit bash stuff and that's kind of like your vibe and what you want to do and you want to create a scene with assets that are pre-made and stuff, maybe Unreal Engine's the way to go. Uh, especially if it's a, if it's like kind of atmospheric or something like that. Um, and you could always model it out in C4D and use the direct live link, put it in Unreal Engine and do like the fog and the lighting and stuff in there so you can create and then plop it in. And yes, Unreal Engine 5 supports Redshift materials. So now you're asking, what about the live link? Well, we'll test that later, not today, but uh, you're thinking of portals now. Uh, so yes, so again, super cool. Not a one shot, definite answer. Unreal Engine 5 the fastest. Uh, it's all you'll ever need, uh, but it does. It's closing the gap, man. It is for a price difference of about, you know, let's say not including Max on one, we're just doing C40. The price difference of $900 a year. You got to think, you got to start kind of questioning, you know, am I using C40 for the things that make C40 like the, the strengths of C40? Or could I be using another tool that's free? Uh, then I would be freed up to have like a $900 more budget in assets or stuff like that. And that sounds pretty cool. Uh, or just extra money. So, yeah, that's kind of the questions you got to ask yourself. I know I'm not here to tell you one is one is the best and one is the worst. They both have different options. Um, don't, what I'm here to do is get you thinking, get you to try it. Um, it's very intuitive to learn one. If you know how to use one, you'll figure out how to use the other. They're pretty much identical in the way they work. Camera move is easier to me in Unreal Engine because I'm a gamer and it's like the death cam from Halo and Chivalry and 
game as far back as death cams go. The orbit cam, no clip, Gary's mod, whatever. Uh, so it's secondhand to me. But uh, it may not be to you if you're not a big gamer. Uh, it may be weird to kind of drive around the camera. But uh, that's really, I mean, but the, the hierarchy is pretty much the same. Nodes are the same. Uh, it's got a lot of similarities. Uh, definitely going to do more Unreal Engine 5 stuff because I love it. I'm going to compile a list of um, stuff like that. But I'm also going to do more C4D stuff because I still love that. And I'm going to lean in to the strengths of C4D in my tutorials. And uh, then do the more of the basic stuff for, for both C4D and Unreal Engine 5 as well. But if you enjoyed this and like the AI song, <laughs> please leave a like, subscribe. And again, thank you all so much for 100,000 subs. We'll have a video on that too. Cool. Thanks for watching. See you next time.